let's just start, uh, ladies first. Kayla, uh, uh, would you just tell the audience uh, who you are and what you do for St. Luke's? Certainly. I'm the director on the sixth floor in Meridian, um, and I was a previous stroke program coordinator for the Treasure Valley. Great. Great. And uh, many of you know that our uh, stroke program here uh, achieved uh, national certification as a primary stroke center and uh, so really great work. And uh, that's translated to a lot better stroke care for uh, the patients and the communities we serve. So, uh, Mr. Wright, you know, I come from Texas. I can recognize a cowboy when I see one. Uh, Thank you. Tell, tell the audience a little bit about um, what you uh, do with respect to the rodeo. Well, I'm a team roper now. Uh, years ago, I rode bulls and bareback horses, and uh, I've had a lot of success in Idaho. I won the state 12 times. I won the world in 64 and the team roping, and uh, I have, uh, I am uh, here now just team roping again on the count of this young lady and what she did for me. Well, we're going to talk about that. <laughs> so actually both you and your wife have a long history in the rodeo and, <clears throat> and uh, so let's go back to uh, May of this year and uh, you were in uh, New Plymouth, right? New, New Plymouth. Uh, and I went to New Plymouth to photograph her video, her barrel run, and and while I'm there, I went to the restroom, and uh, when I was coming out of the restroom, I had the stroke hit, and uh, I collapsed in the restroom. Well, how did it manifest? How, how did you realize something was going well, wrong with you? I just reached up and unlocked the stall door, and I felt it coming on and I just collapsed uh, and I uh, the door swung in and uh, I had to crawl under the stall door and uh, and I broke the ankle and uh, to get out and I kicked the outside door open I was just crawling and uh, and then uh, a little lady uh, was in the next restroom and she seen my leg out to the door and she called to help and that was when Kyla, uh, Kayla showed up and, uh, and she took over. So Kayla, when you first, you didn't know Mr. Wright uh, ahead of time, did you? Well, I knew who he was. We were actually parked by each other, um, but we hadn't really got to know each other as well as we do now. And you were at the rodeo because you actually um, do some things as well, right? Yes, so I run barrels as well. Um, and I was on my horse waiting to run when I heard someone call, um, yelled out, call 911. And so when you got over and saw Mr. Wright, what did you notice that gave you the inclination he was probably having a stroke? Well, he was laying down on the bathroom floor, and I could tell he was kind of out of it, and I think you just start to assess, um, I started to assess him, figure out what the cause of that was. Um, so I could tell he was confused, he wasn't responding to me verbally, um, he wanted to get up, he was still trying to leave. but. Um, and so I just started to assess him. I had him squeeze my hands. I could tell that he was weaker on the left side. Um, I had him smile and I could see um, his teeth on one side of his mouth and not the other. Um, and he could say a few words, but he couldn't respond to me appropriately. Okay, so talk about uh, what you did at that point. Well, um, I actually yelled out to someone outside the bathroom to make sure that um, we actually called 911 and no one did. Um, so someone had yelled it to the group and no one actually called 911. And so I said, call 911. I don't care if you call twice, just make sure we call. Um, and then I tried to keep him calm, tried to keep him on the bathroom floor. I tried to keep Barbara there as well because um, he wanted to leave every time she did. Um, and then kind of continued to assess him, ask Barbara some of the information that we need to know to be able to give him TPA. Um, so asking her the exclusion criteria, things that would you know, um, limit him from receiving that. 
and, and tell people that aren't clinical here what TPA is and what you're talking about. Sure. Um, so that's the medication that we um, give to stroke patients to help break up that clot that they have in their brain. Um, so I found out how old he was. That, that helps us determine um, what we can do with the medication as far as a time frame. I asked Barbara when we saw him last at his normal state, so we determined a time of his last known well. Um, I asked her if he had diabetes, trying to figure out if this could be a low blood sugar type situation, um, if he was on other medications such as blood thinners. Um, what else did I ask? I kind of asked her anything I could think of in the moment, so we had the information we needed to make that decision. So EMS arrived? Yes. And uh, where did they transport Mr. Wright to? So we, um, they, yeah, we actually talked to him at dispatch and then they arrived and they, we didn't know it, but they'd actually called Life Flight. They had intentions of flying him directly to Boise, um, but that wasn't really necessarily what Lonnie and Barbara wanted to do. So we decided the best place for him to go was to Fruitland. Um, and I knew from our, our stroke program meetings that we were able to give TPA in Fruitland. So that's where we, that's where we sent him. That's great. You don't remember a whole lot about being at Fruitland, do you? No, I don't remember a lot about Fruitland. I, I want, I'm aware of, a, she asked me to grin Kayla, and uh, that uh, I'm aware of, but Fruitland, I don't uh, recall it. Uh, my wife said it was a good, clean, new hospital, and, and that's just all I could tell her. <laughs> <laughs> good. <laughs> And it is. Uh, <laughs> uh, so you uh, arrived at uh, Fruitland, and you had already been in communication, Kayla, with the folks in the Fruitland uh, ER, so they were ready to go. Um, so what was the time from you finding Mr. Wright to him getting TPA, the clot-busting drug? You know, I'm not familiar with that amount of time. I don't know how long it took for him to get to the hospital. I do know that he received the medication in 39 minutes from the time he got to the ER door to when they started the medication. Okay, great. And then, uh, you know, I, I think, Mr. Wright, this speaks to, and, and based on what you and your, your wife um, had wanted, this kind of speaks to the importance of us having care close to home and, and having, uh, in this case, close to rodeo sites, uh, but, uh, uh, but also the importance of rural health care, that, that these rural sites may be the very first place that are seeing a patient with a time sense of emergency. Well, uh, Fruitland was a, my wife's deal. Uh, she thought I, we had a bad experience in uh, Phoenix, when uh, I didn't get the drug administered, and uh, she thought I would go to Fruitland, but when I got to Fruitland, they give me the drugs, and then the doctor at Fruitland transferred me to Boise because the drug was not uh, capable of breaking up the clot that was too large. So in your case, um you needed not only the uh, medication, but you had to go undergo uh, intervention where a neuroradiologist would actually insert a catheter, a wire, up through your artery up into the brain arteries, right? You saw Dr. Pearl here in Boise? Yeah. Yeah. So we uh, flew you in and, and then they took you uh, in to do that procedure. And there was uh, Dr. Pearl I was uh, highly recommend him because he had a personal touch too. He called my wife twice. One uh, told her not to worry, and I get choked. I don't blame you. And uh, he uh, called her again, and the operation was over, and he said it was uh, successful. That's great. Well, and obviously, I mean, you have recovered so much uh, function that you lost? Well, I'm uh, roping again and uh, the, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, uh, uh, the, the whole deal was from Kayla to the end was run in a professional and very courteous manner. That's great.
That's great. After, uh, uh, and, I, and I think this point also, you know, we talked about the importance of the rural health care and that access to uh, initial treatment, but I think your story also testifies to uh, the benefit of a health system where your care could be coordinated from that initial uh, point, uh, not to mention that we send our employees right out to you at the rodeo at all. Uh, <laughs> But then uh, that coordination of getting you transferred in by helicopter, having the neurointerventionalist that obviously you can't, doesn't make sense to have that person anywhere else other than just Boise to bring you into Boise, but then you could get that state of the art care. And, um, you know, I think this is, you know, I often hear the things that you all hear about, you know, how big St. Luke's is and, and everything. But I think when we think about it, when you think about the, the, the area that we're trying to cover and trying to have access points to care close to home, but have the resources of a major medical center, if God forbid needed, you know, I, I think that people are benefiting from the fact that we're big, that we have these uh, services and that access. Well, I don't think the rural people understand the time frame you got to have care on a stroke. They, they can't administer the drug after so, so long and uh, the brain becomes dead and the, uh, the drug would uh, do more harm and good. And coordinating that time is critical, and not, not just for strokes, but we do the same thing with heart attacks. And um, we have had some really amazing success stories with people being in remote areas of Idaho, having a heart attack, and yet us being able to transport them, get them to the cardiac catheterization lab in time that we can go in there, open up the artery, and save that heart muscle. And I'm just real proud of the work that all of our employees and our physicians do. It's just, just incredible. And it's saving lives, and it's in, uh, preventing complications and well, disabilities. Well, I would be uh, paralyzed. Yeah. And what would, I mean, if you were paralyzed on your left side, what would that have meant to your life? Well, uh, I'm left-handed. I rope with the left hand. That would not happen again. Yeah. No. No, uh, I am thankful. I volunteered uh, to do a television deal and a uh, paper deal, and I am doing it to get uh, people aware that you got to get care. The cowboy don't care, care about getting to care. You break your arm, I'll get, get it fixed tomorrow. Yeah. Now, the stroke, <laughs> that don't work. No, because... Uh, that, uh, that uh, Caleb being there was really an excellent, uh, but I, I think that I would have had time to call the ambulance and get to Fruitland. But the uh, doctor at Fruitland uh, is an excellent person too because she knew that I had to go to Boise. Yeah. And speaking about how tough cowboys are, um, uh, I would have loved to have seen this, but uh, as he was recovering uh, from his stroke, and remember, a uh, broken ankle, uh, and so he's in a cast, and uh, you can see how he is. He wants to get back to roping. So he's riding around on his lawnmower at home practicing roping with his cast on. That's what I heard. <laughs> yeah. When you get 75, you lose a lot of ability. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it doesn't sound like you've lost much.